Oh, right we're on. Never duff or thin a pitch shot again for the rest of your life. <laughs> How good would that be to have the confidence to never duff or thin a pitch shot ever again in your life? That's what's going to happen today. See this golf tee? That's very important. I'm going to put that there as a reminder and we'll get back to that later on in the video. What's that tee doing there? <laughs> That's important. Right, we're on. Engage. Sounds a little bit crazy. Those flowers are lovely, aren't they? <laughs> it happens. What does it involve? Let's make it tight and tough. Look at that. Brutal. Technical? <laughs> I don't think so. Look at the quality. Designed the packaging myself. Pretty clean, no? Eh? Two small things. Everybody on tour does it, but it's not that hard. I think they'll enjoy it. It's going to be quite intense, though. So having a technique that allows you to play pitch shots. I've got a 54 degree wedge here. Little pitch shots that ensures you never duff or thin again. What causes the duff and the thin is the release of the club too early. So this flat left wrist being compromised through impact, that controls low point. So my low point is now here. If this straight line is not maintained through impact, that's going to happen. The angle between lead arm and club shaft is created or occurs. The leading edge hits the ground or the club bottoms out too early, we hit the ground too early, or we miss the ground, come back up and thin. Not anymore though. That is a thing of the past. I'll change the camera shortly so you can see the outcome of these. But really, what we need to do is keep everything passive. I think about the club head and the forearms, the club shaft and the wrists and the forearms working together as one. So I'm there to there. Now that effectively is a long putt. So from here to here, there's no break of the wrist whatsoever. Then when we play a longer shot, of course, there's going to be wrist hinge added in there, but I let that happen naturally. I do not create that. It's just a thing that actually occurs with the momentum of the stroke. So I play a little one just there to there. So to practice this, striking the ground in the same spot, but having no wrist hinge whatsoever, there. Strike's amazing. every single time. Now these are only carrying about six or seven yards. They're only carrying about six or seven yards purely because I'm focusing on strike and I'm trying to maintain this stability through impact. All I'm working on here is impact. I've hit every one of these perfect. There's been no opportunity at all for the club to bottom out too early. There's That is an impossibility. It's, it is, it's the closest thing to a putt that you're ever going to get. World class leather glove day, loft and lie. It's beautiful. Check it out, link below. Quite literally fits like a glove. Whew. So it is effectively like a long putt. Okay, no wrist hinge whatsoever. Now, how do we feel that? Now, now working from here to here is fine. Okay, on the longer shot, as I say, I'm coming from here to here, on the longer shot, I'm going to get to here and then wrist hinge is going to kick in. But I want to feel as though my wrists and my club shaft are in line for the whole action. So when I take the club back to here, my club shaft and my lead wrist are still in one line. When I follow through to here, my club shaft and my lead arm are still in one line. That's the focus I want, that's the feel I want. Matt Fitzpatrick gains that feel by putting his left hand down and that way because now his left hand is more, or his left arm is more pronounced. So even if you just go left hand down first, you'll see and feel it's impossible from here to here to break that lead wrist. Now that's a great way to practice it. It could get a little bit risky on the golf course if you're not used to that feeling. But like all good golf practice, you have to, you have to exaggerate the motion to feel, to get the feel. So left hand down is the, the exaggerated motion, and then you go on to right hand down, and then play that and now I've got the ball going further because I've created a little bit more momentum. Now, it's body. It's 100% body. When we swing from here to here, it's 100% body. I've not forgotten about that T. <laughs> so it's 100% body. My hands and arms are there and in order to get from here to here, I turn body to turn body. Okay, it's purely a rotational action and that way I'm going to guarantee low points the same every time and strike the ground in the same spot every single time. So I'm there striking the ground in the same spot every single time, still maintaining that and I've nearly hold it. I'm going to show you that. So with the slightly longer action, 
I was close. Not bad. So we've identified it's a body action. We've identified the hands do very, very little. Now we have to understand how we can create a little bit of wrist hinge, but also be productive. Do you remember the T I put in the ground earlier? When I take my grip with my trail hand on, I'm going to place that T in there. That T is now perfectly above the club shaft. There, in line with the leading edge of the club. So the T and the leading edge match up. The leading edge and the T line up. So it works as one motion. So now when I set myself on there with the T and the grooves and the leading edge all matching up, so there's T, shaft, leading edge all matched up. As I take the club back to there, it's still matched up. I get right back to the horizontal there, still matched up. Through to horizontal, that T will match up to there. Now, if I use my wrist and hands, you can see the T is now out of alignment. We've no longer got that alignment. If I add loft, we've no longer got that alignment. I want that T to stay on top of the shaft for the whole action. As I look down, the T dissects the grip. The bottom end of that grip, the T, is directly in the middle of that grip from my visual perspective. As I get to here, the T is still on top of the grip and still on top of the grip. And that way, I've done nothing with my hands and arms. If I do my hands and arms only, the T is now out of line. The T is out of line. So my body turns and it keeps the T in perfect alignment. Perfect alignment. Then I can create more, mo more motion. So here to here is the focus. But then as I get up here, there will be a little bit of wrist hinge. As long as I come back to my position, through my positions, and then let it hinge again. I will be absolutely fine. So I'm there. There, go in. <laughs> so T in, I'm hitting these positions. So we started off from there to there to feel the impact, body turning. Now I've created more motion. So yes, there's a bit of hinge in there. And yes, there's a bit of hinge in there on the way through. But the hinges come out here, continue through as one motion, and then gone back in. I never think about putting the hinge in at all. It just happens. Just happens. All I'm focusing on is the bottom part of the arc where my structure is. So I'm there, there. Pretty good, I've put no loft on there. We'll do a shot with loft on in just a second. That yellow ball will be the loft shot. But you can see there how structured and how easy it is to control your low point. There, there. It's so, so easy to get good strike on that. Look at this. Add loft. Pretty simple. Put the loft on at a dress. Put the loft on at a dress. Don't try and create any extra motion that's not required. So release patterns in golf, short game. Very, very important. Absolutely. Only when required. <laughs> Only when you need them. Don't have to make it any more complicated than it actually is. So if you put the loft on at a dress, what's going to happen? Well... I've put the loft on at a dress, so I've opened the face up and lay it there. It's now going to use a little bit of the bounce more because the back of the club is more in contact with the ground. My T's in my hand, I take my address position and everything looks the same T-wise except the grooves point to the right. So the T in relation to the shaft is still the same. I'll have to go longer back and longer through because there's loft on the club which forces the ball upwards instead of forwards now. From there to there, still the same position through impact. Same feelings, added more loft, nearly landed it in the hole. Again, it's harder to judge distance when you've got more loft on it. But you can see and you can hear how good that strike is. I've not duffed one. <laughs> I've not duffed one, or thinned one, since doing this. So I've gathered them back up. You could see how the distance control, or the ability to control the shot was harder when loft was added on. I mean, this is not a shot I would add loft on to. But when people, yes, I watch people playing golf, they're adding loft to shots that there's no need to add loft to. So that one there, decent result. This one here, adding no loft much easier to control it, much easier to get that ball going towards the hole. But certainly when you do have to add loft, you do not have to work on release patterns 
unless it's vital. You do not have to think about how the hands are going to roll through impact unless you've got no other option. But I always see from here, 54 degrees of loft is the most loft I carry. You can see how much loft I can put on there and think about my impact positions and my alignments through impact that we talked about earlier and I can get that ball in the air. I can put lots of loft on there, play really high shots with only 54 degrees of loft but there's no need. There's no need unless I really have to. This shot here, everything we did before is much easier to control. From here to here is king. I hope that highlights how you can create low point that will prevent you from thinning or duffing a pitch shot ever again. It's easy, we just we put too many moving parts in the golf swing, we make it more complicated than it has to be. If you want to get better at driver, click this video that's on the screen right now. Loft and Lie Golf gloves are flying, have a look at that, details linked below. And of course my website, eurekagolfswing.com, also in the description below. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.